Are you aware that oral bacteria are reported on a stool test report? Are you aware that it could be clinically significant for your patient? Welcome to the introduction to the Master of the Gut Lab Analysis Workshop. Let's get started with oral bacteria in the stool test results. It's seen often and it's often overlooked and they make no mention of it in tech support. Here's an example of the Genova GIFX stool test report. As you can see, there's no mention anywhere on this report of any oral bacteria. But that was not the case when I called tech support many years ago when it was owned by Metametrics. As many doctors will attest to, we're never really taught how to analyze a stool test report or an ion profile or food allergy is just highs and lows, make it, make it the opposite and everything will just work out. So my very first stool test that I ordered many years ago, I called tech support at Metametrics. And the first thing the tech said was, well, it looks like you had an oral infection. I was like, oral infection, this is a stool test. How can this, where, did you, where do you see that? She's like, oh, I can't talk about it. Nothing I could say or do would entice her to expand on oral bacteria. Then we got to the immunology section of the stool test. Here I need to give you a little backstory on the person that we did this test for. This was a 16-year-old cheerleader who would go violently manic when she got exposed to gluten. Now her stool test was positive, so she had fourth quintile anti-gliadin antibodies, but on the Metametrics serum test, there, there were zero antibodies for gluten, but there was, she was high for orange and kidney beans. Now, this didn't make sense, and I asked the tech support, why would this occur? And she was like, I don't know. And so I ended the, the consultation or the, the tech support call. And then I figured, well, I'm going to call back in a couple of days and get a different tech support, and maybe they'll fill me in on why they're seeing oral bacteria on this test results. So I called back in a couple days, and sure enough, first thing she said, oh, it looks like you had an oral uh, bacterial infection. And once again, she refused to expand on why they saw oral bacteria. It was at this point that I decided I would go through every marker for every test I was using in my practice. The first thing to understand about stool tests when comparing PCR DNA to culture or multi-TOV test is they are not apples to apples, oranges to oranges. They are completely different tests. Less than 3% of bacteria are culturable. Aerobic microbes are easily cultured, for example, candida. Most studies report only on culturable microbes. They can't grow it, it doesn't exist. Non-cultural microbes, because they can't grow them, are reported as rare cases of pathology. Labs using the multi-TOV technology must first culture the sample, then they do a PCR DNA test on whatever grows. By doing this, they play to both the culture and the PCR aficionados. 97% of microbes are not culturable. They're either not culturable or they're operationally non-culturable, meaning they go dormant, or they're not alive, or they're actually dead by the time they reach the lab. Most studies, again, report only on culturable microbes. Non-culturable microbes are reported as rare cases of pathology. Not because they don't cause problems, it's because they can't see them, they don't exist, they didn't cause the disease. So are the cases of disease really rare, 
or is it that their unculturable microbes are not observed and thus making it rare? My analysis is highly influenced by Dr. Lord's paper, The Documented Limitations of Culture-Based Stool Assessments when he was at Metametrics. Unfortunately, this paper has been disappeared, but it is available on my website in a PDF format. During transportation from the patient's home to the lab, competitive exclusion kicks in. This occurs when two species competing for the same resources cannot coexist at the same time because most bacteria are killed or go dormant during transportation. Candida is the only ones to survive and they can outcompete their competition in the incubator at the lab. When I started doing stool testing for my patients, the majority would walk in with a CDSA or a culture-based stool test in hand and I would have them do a PCR DNA test. This brought to light the, the differences between the two tests. I have done over 700 PCR DNA stool tests and to date I only have 10 cases of Candida. Now, I don't count fungi unidentifiable as a case of Candida. That's house mold. It just printed on the Genova test results that human microflora is influenced by the environmental factors, i.e. transportation from the patient's home to the lab and the competitive ecosystem of the organisms in the GI tract. So even though this is printed, they still ignore this basic principle of culture and DNA. They're still playing to both sides of the, the stool test, uh, culture aficionados and those that are looking to PCR. Another piece of Dr. Lord's work that was disappeared after Metametrics was sold is his book, Laboratory Evaluations for Integrative and Functional Medicine. This book, I believe, is the basis for the ion profile and is also very useful for the organic acids test from other lab companies. It is still available on Amazon, as you can see, but it's pretty pricey. As I have said earlier, I go through every marker of every lab test. And this is the book I used for the ion profile. I have highlighted it and made notes in it as I for each of the markers in the ion profile. The PDF version is with my notes is available on my website. Those who sign up for the ion profile lab analysis workshop will receive my notes in a PDF format that I use as a cheat sheet when evaluating a patient's ion profile or organic acids test results. Hey everyone, did you know microbes change their shape to support their survival? Did you know microbes can damage antibodies, making them dysfunctional? Or attack their microbial enemies? Or worse yet, mimic antibodies to your body? Thank you for joining us for this Functional Medicine Lab Analysis Workshop video. The sign-up link is in the description below. We hope that you found this information useful and that it helps you on your journey towards optimal health. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more information on videos like this one.